Hey, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to take a look at showing how to record your key presses and your mouse clicks and display those to the screen using a couple different pieces of free software. So when I do tech tutorials, I try to tell people the shortcuts that I use, and if you can get the shortcuts into your arsenal, they can really improve the ergonomics of your workflow and make things a lot easier when you're moving throughout applications. Now, I often try to call these out, but sometimes I forget, and I think it'd be really helpful for people to be able to see what I'm doing in real time, even if I forget to tell what keys I'm pressing exactly. So there's a couple projects that can help us out with this. The first one I wanna take a look at is a project called Screen Key, and you can see I'm over here at gitlab.com. This is the official repository for the project, so gitlab.com forward slash screen key in the repository called Screen Key. And I've used this project a lot in the past, and essentially what this does is it will display all the keystrokes in a little black box on my screen as I type them. And since we're on an Ubuntu computer, we can actually just use our default package manager in order to install this. So let's take a look at doing that. I'm going to open up my home screen and then search for my terminal, and then I'll open this up. I think I'm going to opt for a darker theme here, so I'm going to go to Edit, Preferences, and I'll go over to the color section here. And then I'll uncheck the Use Colors from System theme here. So you can see we have our background color set here. You could change this if you wanted to change it to something else, like we could change this to blue and select that. But I'm gonna go back here and I'm actually going to change it back to a darker color here. So I'll grab this hash here and I'll add it back up here. And say select and then close out of this dialog. Okay, so let's expand this window and you can actually expand it on an Ubuntu computer by holding down control on your home key and pressing the up arrow. See, this is something that would be handy if we had screen key already recording. And then if I want to increase the font size, I hold down control shift and press the plus key. And now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to update our package manager. So we're going to do a sudo apt update, and this will allow us to get the most recent versions of software. I'll just add my password real quick. And then I'll press Control L to clear my back scroll. And now I'm going to do a sudo apt install screen key, just like that. And I'll say yes to add this to my disk. Now that's finished installing, I'll clear my back scroll again. And then if I press my home button, I can go up to my launcher again. And now I can search for screen key here. And you'll see that appears right here in this application. If I press enter, you'll see that this screen key application is opening up down here in my menu. And if I start typing anything like hello world, you can see that it actually appears down here in this little section here. Now I expected to have an option up here in my menu for screen key so I can change some of the settings here, but I don't see it appearing. Let me just backspace here and I'm going to type in screen key manually here and press enter. So you see we have an error message here that it failed to load this module. I'm just going to copy this And it's as simple as installing some of these dependencies here. So I'm gonna grab this line and I'm going to copy this and I'll come back here. I'm gonna control C to get out of that and just paste this in here and install those modules. Now let's try to run screen key again. I'm gonna press up twice to actually go to my last command. You'll see screen key here. If I try to run this now, it completes without an error. Let me go back up to my launcher and I'll go to screen key here. Press enter. You can see it's trying to open up again over here. So let's come in here and let's kill screen key temporarily. Let's do a P kill F screen key. Now if we type stuff, it no longer shows up. That's good. That makes it a little easier to work with. And then in order to get the screen key icon to appear in our upper menu up here, we have to install some more software. So let's do a sudo apt install python app indicator we'll say yes clear my back scroll again and let's try this one more time let's go to screen key open this up and you'll see that screen key icon appears right up here in the upper right now so if i click on this 
you see that it's currently showing the key. So again, let's type some commands. Okay, you can see that appears down here. But we now have preferences here. So I can go to my preferences and I can do a couple things. So if I don't want the bar to appear as a long strip across the bottom of my screen, I can actually draw my own region on here and have the display only appear within that box. So I'm gonna click this select window region. It looks like we require this slop extension. So there's a GitHub repository here. Let me just open this up real quick. So let's come back here and let's install that. Let's do a sudo apt install slop. Say yes. And then let's kill screen key one more time to exit out. And you can see we're exited out now. And let's start it up again. And this time if we go to our preferences and we select the window or region, you can see that our mouse turns into this crosshairs here. And then we can draw the region wherever we want. So I could grab this and I could select a box up here maybe, something like this. And then if I close out of here and I start typing, you can see that we get this little box up here in the upper right now. So you can play around with these preferences a little bit until you get it exactly how you want it. So you can change the font size here. You can choose how long it stays on the screen for. So for instance, 2.5 seconds, I could bump this up to five seconds if I wanted to stay longer on the screen. So test, and you can see that it stays on there for a while. I think that's a little too long though. I think 2.5 seems about right. Maybe even less time would be good. I actually think something like two seconds might be about right. Let's try 1.5. Yeah, I like that. 1.5 seems about right. I can change the font family to other fonts I've installed on my system. So you can see I have quite a few actually already installed here. I think sans bold is fine. Now I think this option here is pretty interesting. So we can show our modifier sequences only if we want. Now, instead of just typing our normal text, it'll only show when we're modifying something, as in holding shift or control or alt. So let's grab this and press modifier sequences only. And then if we type test, nothing's happening. But if I do control T, you'll see that. So for instance, if we switch back to our terminal and I backspace, you won't see any of the typing that I am doing. But as soon as I do something like a control C to stop the line, so I'm gonna grab this, I might just draw it down here in the bottom right hand corner to stay out of the way. We also have this option here to compress repeats after a certain number of times. So if I do an alt tab, an alt tab, an alt tab, all of a sudden, if I keep doing it, you'll see that this number just increments here. And you can see I'm just switching through my applications up here. And then I can do an alt arrow to just manually go one direction or the other. I can bump up the font size here manually as well. So I can click something like 72 if I want really large font. Although that doesn't seem to actually change this at all. So I'm just going to reset this position dialog here. You can see that the text is quite a bit larger than I was able to manually get it when I was drawing the region. Now, if I play around with these settings a little bit, so if I draw a region like this, which looks like I could have a fairly large font, and I were to do a switcher, you can see that it's not super huge, but if I draw that region much bigger in terms of a, a much larger height like this, then the text actually bumps up a little bit. So it's positioning this box, which is a fixed height within the region I drew. And so it gives it a much larger font face when I do something like that. Okay, so those are the screen key settings. For now, I'm just going to close out of this. I think that's enough to get started for now. So I'll quit this and then that'll stop my screen key dialog from popping up. We can close out of these other windows here. Now, the other program I want to take a look at was Keymon.
So this project on GitHub is actually just a mirror for the code that exists on code.google.com forward slash p forward slash key hyphen mon. I'm a little more familiar with the GitHub interface, so I'm just going to take a look at the project over here. Now we can install this project. Let's go to our terminal. Let's do a sudo apt update again. Clear the back scroll and do a sudo apt install key mon. And we'll say yes. And then if we come up here and we press our home screen, we can look for Keymon. So you can see Keymon here. And you can see that this has now popped this dialog up in the upper left-hand corner. So if I were to click something, I'm doing a left click right now. You can see that it's showing that I'm doing a left click. If I do a right click, it shows that as well. I can hold shift. You can see that. Control. If I start typing something, you can see that it appears over here on the right hand side. So it's a little different than screen key, but it's a similar idea. It shows a little bit more in terms of the visuals and you get the mouse, which you don't get with screen key, but the actual text that you're writing is in a little more of a condensed format. So if getting the text is important to you, this will be a little bit challenging for folks to read, but normally the text is actually appearing on the screen. So for instance, if I type hello, it's appearing here on the screen. So it's not that important for most users to see it up here. So I want to take a look here. So there's actually a theme that you can add for Keymon. So if you don't like the default graphics that are appearing up here, you can choose these graphics, which look similar to something you might see in Mac OS. So I can actually come up here and I can click on the Keymon dialog here and I can right click on this. And then I can go to settings and I can actually change that theme. So if I go to miscellaneous, you can see that there's themes here. We're using the classic theme right now, but we could change this to use the Apple theme. And now you can see that this theme actually appears similar to what we were seeing here. So if I were to left click, you can see that little blue circle appears up here in the left hand corner. And it even has the little Mac logo here. So that comes default installed with the Keymon application. I'll right click on this again, go to settings, and we want to show our meta key here. So let's click that. So that's this launcher key we have. You can see that it appears right here as this. It's kind of hard since we're covering up our screen when we do that. Let's go back to our settings over here in miscellaneous. I'm going to try a different theme here. Let's try Ubuntu. I like this theme a lot better. This uses the Ubuntu branding here for our home key. Or as they call it, our meta key. And then if I press this Windows decoration option here, it actually gives us an ability to grab and drag this over to a different place on our screen. So I could put this over in the bottom right, for instance, and then I could get rid of that option if I wanted to, but now it's positioned down here. And this makes it a little easier if we want it to appear above our terminal here. So I can get out of the preferences. You can see that's appearing there. You can see the options, even if I panel through different screens. And if I type, you can see that. Going to right click on this again, go to settings. So I'm going to scale this up a little bit. We're at 1.0 right now. I might try 1.8. So that's pretty large here. Maybe it's a little too big. Try 1.4. Somewhere around 1.4 or 1.2 seems about right to me. I'll try that one more time. I'm going to decorate this so I can move this again. You can get rid of the background pane if you wanted to, so you can do the window backgroundless. So the graphics look a little choppy on the mouse. Maybe we could try a different theme here. Let's go to our settings again. Clear Ubuntu is still my favorite. And if I wanted to exit this program, I can just right click on it and go to quit. And there you have it. Those are two programs you can use to record your key presses. Let me know in the comments which one you like better. And if you use either of these programs and you have some tricks you want to share with other people, let us know down there as well. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned to this channel for more content like this in the future. 
and take care.